Hey all, today we are going to start talking about uh, our next unit and we're going to start that discussion with talking about angles. And so the first thing we want to talk about angles is how to name them. And there are three ways to name angles, but first let's quickly talk about the parts of an angle. So an angle is made by um, either two lines intersecting or two segments or in this case two rays. So each of these is a ray. It starts at a point and then goes on forever. That's what the arrow means. And so an angle has two sides. So this angle has this side that we would call FG. And it's a ray, so I put a little arrow on top of it like that. And it has this side we call FE. And I'll put a little ray on top of it. And then it has a vertex, which is the most important point. And that vertex is the place where those two either segments or lines, or in this case, the two sides, the two rays, where they meet. So that point right there, point F, is our vertex. An array or a, a, an angle kind of looks like a V. And so the vertex, starting with a V, is the place where the two parts of, of the V meet. It's the place where they meet. And so there are two or three ways to name an angle. One way would be to just name it using the letter of the vertex. So here our vertex is at F, and so we could call this angle F. And we want to put an angle symbol. You'll see an angle symbol a couple ways, something like that. Sometimes that gets confused with a less than sign, so we can put a little arc through it to make it look like an angle. So this says angle F. The other way we can name it is if there's some sort of label. So here we have a label inside of the angle. There's no little degree measure. If that was telling us how big the angle was, let's say maybe uh, it was 82, there would be a little degree symbol there. So this just says 2. That doesn't mean it's 2 degrees. That means we can call it angle 2. And then the other way to name it would be using the vertex and then a point on both of the sides. So using three letters. So there's a point on each of the sides. There's G on one side and E on the other. And F is in the middle. The vertex is in the middle. So we could name this by calling it angle G, F, E. And notice the vertex is in the middle. We could go the other way as well. So technically, this is a the same uh, kind of idea, but we can write this in reverse, E, F, G. It doesn't matter which way you read the letters, as long as the vertex letter is in the middle. So there's three ways to name an angle. You can name it with just its vertex. You can name it with a label. Or you can name it using uh, its vertex and a point on each side. And so I can do the same thing for this one. Um, I have two sides. And C is my vertex. And so I can name this angle C. This angle also has a label in it. That's not a measure because there's no degree symbol. So I could call it angle 2. And then I could use a point on each side, B and D. And as long as C is in the middle because that's the vertex, I could call this either angle B. CD, or I could call it angle DCB. As long as C is in the middle, it's telling us where the vertex is. So when we're naming with three uh, letters, we're kind of creating sort of like a roadmap. You know, this says my angle is if I start at B, I go to C, and then I stop at D. And when I do that, I trace my angle. And so it's kind of a roadmap. And you can see that the reverse direction would be D to C to B. And you still are tracing the same angle. And so these two names are telling us the same thing. The only time I'm not allowed to name an angle by using its vertex is when uh, that angle shares a vertex with another angle. So if I look at this picture, I have this big angle. And its vertex is V. I have uh, this angle, sorry if you can't see that, and its vertex is also V, and then I have this last angle, and its vertex is also V. So I have three angles in this picture who we could consider angle V, 
but that's not specific enough. We don't know which one of the angles we're talking about. So in this case, I have labels, and so I can name this angle angle four. I can name this angle angle five. The other way I can do it is the third option that we talked about on the previous two, is I could use three letters. So if I want to rename angle four, but I want to use letters, well, I can choose points that are on the, the sides. So I'm going to choose a point on either side of this angle here, angle four. And if we trace, I like the idea of tracing these angles. And it'll help me write the name. So I can start at L, go towards vertex V, and then I go towards K. And that's that angle right there we could call angle L, V, K. And if you decided to, to go the other way, you could call it angle K, V, L. Either way, if we were to read this name, it would tell us um, how to trace that angle. And we would know that we're talking about that one. If I wanted to name this other angle, angle 5, sorry, this might be getting a little messy. Um, we could trace from J to V to K. And we could call it angle JVK. And so now, even though they share the same vertex, I have a specific name for each of these angles that tells me um, which part of the picture I'm talking about. This one tells me I'm talking about the angle that has vertex V that also has uh, the side with point J and this side with point K. So it's that one in green. The other thing we want to talk about today about angles is just starting to talk about um, how we can relate pairs of angles. We have special angle pairs we're going to talk about in this unit, and so we'll start with uh, a few of them. The first angle pair relationship we'll talk about are complementary. If I have any two angles and I look at their angle measures, and you can see they have degree symbols here, and when I look at those angle measures, if I were to add them together, they would add up to 90 degrees. So any two angles that add up to 90 degrees are considered complementary. And it's two angles, not more than two. Um, not one, but it's got to be two. So two angles that add to 90 degrees we consider complementary. So one specific way we'll see that is by getting a pair of angles. And uh, we would call angle A. It has a label and angle B. Angle A and angle B are complementary. What's special about them in this scenario is that they share a vertex right there. We don't know what it's called, but that's okay today or right now. They share a vertex and then they share this side. And so we would call these adjacent angles. And so when we have two angles that are adjacent, they share a vertex and a side and they make a right angle. That's what that box means. That means it's 90 degrees. So these two angles together are making 90 degrees, so they are complementary. So both of these are examples of complementary angles. These two are separate from each other, and but they add to 90. These two are adjacent. They share a vertex and a side. But they make this right angle, and we know it's a right angle because that red box was in there. And so those are also complementary. Over here we have two angles, and if we add them together, they'll equal 180. We call these supplementary, and this might not be new, but it's okay. It's really important. We need to go over it. And so these two angles are not adjacent, but they both have their measure. We know they have uh, 55 degrees here because of the symbol, 125 degrees there. They add to 180. That makes them supplementary angles. Here I have a pair of angles, angle A and angle B, and those angles are adjacent. Again, they share a vertex right there, and they share this side. And when we put them together, they make this straight line. So the other side of angle A and the other side of angle B are kind of like back to back. They make this straight line, and straight lines are always 180 degrees. And so these two angles are supplementary. They're adjacent because they share a vertex and a side. They're supplementary because they make this straight line, which adds to 180 degrees. And we give these two 
angles a special name that are called a linear pair. Linear because they make a line together, pair because there's two of them. And my last type I'm going to talk about today, um, these are called vertical angles. Um, these angles share a vertex. So if you look at angle B and angle A, and I'm just going to keep naming these. It's important that we name them. When I look at them, they share a vertex. They both share this vertex. They're not considered adjacent angles because they don't share a side. So angle B is this angle, and angle A is this angle. And they're made by these two lines intersecting, and they're kind of across from each other. We call those vertical angles. So we actually have a second pair of vertical angles in this picture. Let's call this angle C and angle D. They're made by these two lines crossing. They share the same vertex, but they're not adjacent to each other. They're across from each other. Those are called vertical angles. And in future, um, I'll just tell you now, um, angle A and angle B are the same. In math, we call them congruent. And we'll talk much, much further about that word congruent um, in the next lesson and beyond. So these are our three types of angles we'll talk about now. Angle pairs, we have complementary add to 90, supplementary add to 180, and vertical angles that are across from each other like this that are the same. They're congruent. So that means if we know how big one of the angles is, then the other angle is the same. So please be sure if you have them, you ask questions. Make sure you stay to the end and you watch or uh, and you answer the questions at the end of this video. If you have, uh, if you get stuck while you're doing that, please do ask for help. There's two of us, and we would love to help. Take your time and good luck.